Faith Amidst the Ashes, an oral history of the Episcopal Church of St. Mary the Virgin. What did their good Marshall and Mona Lewis and Dr. Geraldine Waters have in common? They each have history with the Episcopal Church of St. Mary the Virgin. St. Mary the Virgin was established in 1873, survived a major fire, and the relocation of the sanctuary. Come in and listen. Listen to our history. Hear from our faith community about the experiences at St. Mary and the plans for our future. Learn about a strong faith community that has survived many changes and obstacles as a result of their unwavering faith in God. The Episcopal Church of St. Mary the Virgin was established in 1873. It is the outgrowth of St. James Episcopal Church, Lafayette Square, formerly St. James First African Protestant Episcopal Church, established June 23, 1824. Out of St. James emerged the formation St. Catherine and St. Philip as missions of Mount Calvary Church. St. Philip survived for several years before it was dissolved. Former members of St. Philip, desiring their own church, requested and received the approval of the bishop to become a separate congregation. The congregation selected the patronage of the Blessed Mother of our Lord, St. Mary the Virgin. The first service of the Chapel of St. Mary the Virgin was held at All Saints Sister Mission House, 85 on Sunday, March 23, 1873, conducted by Father Galbraith B. Perry. This chapel soon became inadequate, and two months later, a hall was rented in West Baltimore on St. Mary's Street, so named after St. Mary's Roman Catholic Seminary. On May 18, 1873, Father Joseph Ritchie, rector of Mount Calvary Church, preached the sermon at the new location. Because of the tremendous increase in membership over the summer months, a friend and benefactor purchased a two-story building on Orchard Street, across from Mount Calvary Church, as a home for the congregation of the chapel of St. Mary the Virgin. The first Mass was said by Father Perry on the Feast of St. Matthew, September 21st, 1873. Sisters initially from All Saints Mission were assigned to assist and supervise various activities, guilds, and the church school. They also gave faithful service in general visitations ministering to the sick and serving the poor. Later, the sisters were housed at 1822 North Utah Street for service at Mount Calvary's St. Mary's and other Episcopal churches in Baltimore under the direction of the Mother Superior. As the years passed, many generations came to faithfully worship at the Chapel of St. Mary the Virgin. On February 4, 1947, all that was loved, revered, and hallowed by age and use was completely destroyed in a few hours by fire. Many beautiful and priceless treasures from the far corners of the world were lost. Repairs were made to a hall owned by the church located across the street. This building was used for service until our church could be rebuilt. During this year, the Reverend E. Lawrence Lasher became our parish priest. 
For two years, the majority of the members of the congregation worked hard at various affairs to raise money for the rebuilding. The church was completed in December of the same year, and the first Mass was sung on the fourth Sunday of Advent. Without the generous help of the rector, vestry, and congregation of Mount Calvary, the rebuilding would have not been possible. In 1873, Father Ritchie promised that St. Mary's would have nothing inferior to that of Mount Calvary, and that promise was more than fulfilled by Father McClinton. Father Botts and the vestry of Mount Calvary in our time. The members of St. Mary's gave generously for the furnishings of the new church. An altar was designed by Mullen Harrison of this city and built of white marble from the famous quarries at Cara, Italy. The baptismal font was carved of stone from the quarries at Caen, France. The pews were designed by the Bear Seating Company and constructed of solid oak in this city. The organ was built by M. Mauler Company, Hagerstown, Maryland. The Stations of the Cross were hand-carved to our specifications by artists in Pestra Italy. In 1958, it was learned that the city proposed an express highway project. This meant that the church's buildings would be condemned in three to five years. This also meant that a new site was needed. Dear Bishops, you will recall that the survey of 1951 suggested that our parish at Walbrook, because of the infiltration of Negroes in this area, should be turned over to the diocese for Episcopal work among them. Within the past few months, great changes have taken place in this community. The apartment houses, which have always had white tenants, are now renting to Negroes. The Windsor Court is one of the largest in Walbrook, and its white tenants have been asked to vacate. We have had three families to leave the Windsor Court within the month. Most of those who attend the services here now come from all sections of the city and from the counties. Many of these can attend the service at Rockdale as early as at Walbrook. It is almost impossible for us to plan any meetings at night, and especially for women, for we have to guarantee them that we will see them home safely. We feel that the time has come to vacate our property here. It will be impossible, physically and financially, to operate both places successfully. The Walbrook area has long been a fertile field for colored Episcopal work. Many of the people living within a radius of one mile of members of St. James Lafayette Square, St. Catherine's, and St. Mary the Virgin. The question of the diocese or some Negro parish taking over our church for establishing a Negro Episcopal parish has been discussed informally on several occasions. But it has never appeared to be urgent till this summer when the changes in the apartment house situation and the opening of the Windsor Hills area took place. We moved to our present site in July 1959 and brought with us most of the remarkable items from the Orchard Street Church. During the first meeting of the vestry, Father E. Lawrence Lasher was officially elected as the first rector. Vestry officers were elected. The senior and junior wardens were appointed by the rector. Father Charles Mercer became priest in charge in 2012 and our rector in 2013. Father Mercer's leadership brought to the church a continued experience of growth in both numbers and in spiritual discipline. 
vacation Bible study occurred in August each year. A choir was established in 2014. The Daughters of the King were reactivated in 2012. And he has grown our membership. Father Mercer is committed to feeding the flock at St. Mary, the word of the Lord. He is committed that St. Mary's will be a beacon of light in the Walbrook community. Come join us as we worship the Lord and serve our community. To me, I don't think I never stop coming here because I feel love in here. I love it.